Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, traits and GED match results of three Ibero-Marusian culture individuals from Tafaraut cave in Morocco who lived in the Upper Paleolithic. Uh, it's going to be a pretty long video, so prepare yourself for uh, this very long and boring video. Uh, but the three samples I'm going to be analyzing is Tafaraut 011, which is the 11th skeleton, then the 12th skeleton, then the 9th skeleton. The 12th and the 11th skeletons are relatives, they're close relatives, however, uh, they're different genders. So, 11th skeleton is a male, whereas the 12th skeleton is a female. Uh, the two male skeletons, 11th and 9th, both have the same Y DNA, the same uh, lineage, paternal lineage, however, they are not relatives. Let's begin the video with the phenotype of the 11th skeleton. With Minus Shakotu, he is predicted to have brown color eyes. Pay attention, not dark brown, regular brown, brown color eyes, uh, snub shaped nose, and black hair. What's interesting is that, for example, most Sub Saharan Africans or East Asians are going to have dark brown eye color prediction with Nashakot, but his prediction is that he has brown eyes, regular brown color eyes. Uh, and what's interesting is for the eye shape prediction with my i2023 tool, he's predicted to have Middle Eastern eye shape and he's predicted to have curly hair with my hair ID tool. This is a pretty good prediction because uh, it's a very high quality file. This is this is the highest quality file of the three files you will see in this video. Uh, he has BH1, he has blue eye haplotype 1, which is the reason why his eye color prediction is so light. Um, it's very interesting that he has BH1 actually because uh, that means that since Native Americans and East Asians often have BH1, it's a pretty uh, ancient mutation and it must have been around for a long time. And now it's of course most most prominent in Northern Europeans. Uh, he doesn't have BH2 or BH3 or BH4, so there is really no reason to suspect he had any kind of light eye color. Uh, because you do need to have at least BH2 in order to have any sort of light eye color. Uh, he lacks the main Eurasian light skin mutation and SLC24A5, so he's probably quite dark skinned, okay? Um, Snipper Free actually predicts him to have intermediate skin tone, black hair and brown eyes. He had some genotypes for uh, light pigmentation like the one in Tyr and Tyr Puan uh, and some other vari variations in ASIP and SLC24A4, but overall uh, he's got very dark kind of appearance. Um, and darker for sure than what's typical for modern Middle Eastern people for darker for sure than what's typical for modern even North Africans uh, and if you want to see what he looked like there's an image on the screen right now which is kind of what I predict him to look like uh, I used an artificial intelligence to generate an image of a guy with these kind of traits that my phenotype prediction tools generate for him now let's move on to Tafaraut 12 skeleton which as we remember is uh, a female relative of the 11th skeleton. Um, she's predicted to have dark brown eyes at 75%. Uh, see the big distinction here. Dark brown versus brown, which was his prediction previously. So she's got darker pigmentation, dark brown eyes. Uh, she's predicted to have snub-shaped nose once again and black hair once again uh, with my Nashakot tool. For eye shape prediction, the eye shape prediction here is not so good. It was only based on six SNPs, so it's not very reliable. However, for the eye shape prediction, she's got Sub-Saharan African eye shape, followed by Estonian at second place, followed by Middle Eastern at third place. And for hair shape prediction, even less reliable result, only based on three SNPs, but she's predicted to have actually kinky, which is a Sub-Saharan African type hair. A very interesting result. She does not have BH1, blue eye haplotype 1, or BH2, or BH3, or BH4, so doesn't have any of the blue eye haplotypes, unlike the previous individual who did have BH1. Uh, very surprising that he did. Um, okay, but she has also got some variants for darker skin in SLC24A5 and SLC24A2, and interestingly, none of these genomes have any light variants in SLC24A5, uh, which is the main kind of mutation responsible for light pigmentation in Eurasians. Not only Europeans, but also East Asians and Indians and all kinds of Eurasian people. Um, she's got lighter genotypes in ASIP and IRF4. Uh, she's got some light pigmentation variants even in OCA2, but she's definitely uh, quite dark in terms of pigmentation. Uh, and if you want to see what she looks like, there is once again an image on the screen uh, generated with artificial intelligence. I just keep uh, mispronouncing and fumbling at these very simple words. Forgive me, English is not my main language. 
uh, well, it's not my first language. It is my main language. It's the language I use the most in my day-to-day -day life, actually, uh, because I don't really talk too much to my family. Uh, I'm mostly, most of my interactions with people are on the internet or, uh, you know, in my college, for example, or making these videos, which I only make videos in English. So I do get more practice speaking English than I do my native tongue, which is Russian. But I did speak only Russian as a kid, and English was a later thing that I learned, uh, maybe at the at the age of like 11 or 12. So for Tafaral 009, this is in the Nime skeleton, and he is actually the darkest individual of the three. He's predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub-shaped nose and black hair. He did not have BH4 or BH2. Uh, not having BH2 also implies that he did not have BH3. And he could have heterozygous genotype in BH1 based on his genotype in this variation, uh, RS7178315, which is uh, one of the variations that I consider to be a part of blue eye haplotype 1. But I'm not really sure because I see a lot of this linkage where people have the main variation in BH1 without this one. So I don't really know if it's... If it's um, definitive that he had heterozygous genotype in BH1 based on his genotype here, if you get what I mean. It's not really definite, but it is a light color variant that he does have. Uh, so he could have a slightly lighter eye color than what's typical for, say, sub-Saharan Africans. And he's predicted to have also kinky hair with my hair ID tool. Uh, once again, the prediction is based on only three SNPs, so it's a very uh, bad prediction, not, not a very accurate prediction in terms of precision and uh, reliability. For eye shape, he's predicted to have Oceanian followed by Sub-Saharan African followed by Amerindian eye shape. Once again, not a very good prediction, uh, only based on seven SNPs. So, uh, yeah. Now, the reason I'm saying he is the darkest of the three individuals is because he only has three light pigmentation. He only has three genotypes that code for light pigmentation. One of them is, is an SLC24A4, the other one is an ASIP, and the third one is an IRF4. Uh, these are not really significant genes. So these are not really significant variations. And the fact that these are the only light pigmentation variants he has is quite, um, it's quite, how do I say this? It's quite impressive, right? It's impressive. Uh, he's definitely very dark in pigmentation and um, he could have even as dark of a skin tone as you can see with the YSEC prediction. YSEC is making him look really black, uh, but he could really have a blackish kind of skin tone. Now let's move on to their GED match results. This is what they score with uh, Eurogenes K13. What's interesting about them is that Tafaral 009, the darkest pigmentation skeleton, the one that has the darkest coloring, is actually the most Eurasian one, the most northern one, the most uh, Euro European-like. He's scoring the least Northeast African and the least Sub-Saharan African out of all of these out of all of these. Um, individuals and he's scoring the most European components such as East Mediterranean and West Mediterranean and he's even scoring some North Atlantic. Very interesting. We see this with PanDNA LK10 results as well. The ninth skeleton is a lot closer to Algerians and Moroccans and a lot further from the Ethiopians than the other two skeletons. Tafaralt uh, 009 skeleton is also scoring the most ENF, which is the kind of the Middle Eastern kind of component, West Eurasian component. He's scoring 51.6% of it, whereas the other two skeletons are only scoring uh, 40, 46 to 49%. So he's a lot more West Eurasian and Middle Eastern shifted than the other two skeletons. With Gidrosia K3, we see that the ninth skeleton is also by far the most West Eurasian of the three. You can see he's actually, uh, compare the West Eurasian score, he's actually 6% uh, more West Eurasian than the other two skeletons, and he's actually uh, also 6% less Sub-Saharan African than the other two individuals. He's a lot less Sub-Saharan African and a lot more West Eurasian. Uh, however, ironically, when it comes to phenotype, uh, he is the darkest and the blackest individual of them, of the three of them. This is what the three of them score with G25. Uh, I don't really find this to be too insightful, but if you are confused in regards to uh, which modern ethnicities resemble these individuals the most, it seems that it is the Berbers and uh, various North Africans that resemble them the most. Nothing too surprising because these individuals are also, these ethnicities are also the people who have the most ancestry uh, from these individuals. Now uh, we're going to be moving on to their traits. So let's begin with uh, Tafaralt. 12, which is the female, it's the only woman of the three genomes. She's got GG in this variation of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. Uh, she's got TT in this OXTR variation, which is 
associated with decreased OXTR expression and lower levels of empathy. So this is the sociopath variation here. Uh, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Definitely this doesn't have type 1 diabetes. TT here, which leads to a significant increase in the risk of type 2 diabetes. Okay. Uh, TT here, which leads to slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's. Well, this, this, this doesn't really matter all that much. Um, and CC here, which leads to an increase in the risk of myopia. So nothing, nothing that's important is found in this file. I'm going to probably make some changes to my genome analyzer tool and add more uh, variants in the miscellaneous section. So there's a section for myopia, Alzheimer's, hemochromatosis, diabetes. And this is, by the way, this is on my, this is on my website. So you will find this on my website. But uh, I will be adding a miscellaneous section as well for various stuff like, I don't know, <laughs> um, color blindness, stuff like that. Just so that there's more information to make videos on when the sample is low coverage. Uh, now let's begin with Tafaralt09. This is the guy that's unrelated to the other two. Uh, he's got a GG in this variation of Compt, which is a typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, AG here, which is implicated in a slightly increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a slightly increased likelihood of schizophrenia. Um, interesting genotype here but I don't know the ethnic complication. It seems to be rare. The A allele is just kind of rare in every ethnicity. It's not like there's uh, an ethnicity that's, that has the A allele at a much higher rate than everybody else. Um, TAC1, not genotyped. CC here, which is the typical genotype for most humans, leading to a slightly higher number of D2 dopamine receptor sites and better memory performance. Okay. Uh, AA in this variation increases the risk of autism and autistic personality traits. Okay. Um, does not carry... The European lactose persistence mutation, nothing is surprising about that. Even most Europeans until like Iron Age don't have this mutation, so why would you expect a uh, Paleolithic Moroccan to have it, Upper Paleolithic Moroccan? Here, CC here, which leads to an increased risk of Alzheimer's. Well, thankfully, this is not a particularly important variation. Uh, the important vari variations for Alzheimer's are these two, where he's not genotyped. And now let's move on to Tafaralt. 11. This is the one that's compare the file sizes. You can you can tell that it's a better file by just looking at the file sizes. Like 009 is 4 megabytes, 4.5 megabytes. 11 is 18, almost 19 megabytes. It's a crazy difference. So yeah, this individual, as you can see, his genotype for most of these things. So this is going to be the important. Uh, he is AG here, which means Valmed genotype, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels. Um, the MET allele is more common in Europeans, so, but I suppose it, it, it can be found in non-Europeans as well. GG here, which is a typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. TT here, which means lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. Interesting, so there, um, this one, TT here, is a uh, warrior genotype, so that, that means uh, slower breakdown of dopamine and more dopamine levels, higher dopamine levels and advantages in attention, attention tasks. So if you have, for example, GG here, but TT here, they would be counteracting each other. But this individual is probably a little bit more warrior than warrior because he's heterozygous in Comets Valmet variation. Uh, AG here, which means one derived no go learner variant. Very interesting stuff. Um, it's a very European kind of genotype to have like I don't I don't really associate the no-go learner variants with anything other than Europe um, very interesting so there is some European like there, there is some European like genotypes that this individual is scoring like the ALEO here or the ALEO here they're both very European alleles to have uh, AG in this variation which is kind of the same as this uh, they're in a linked region together uh, GG here, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. GG in TAC1, which means A2A2, uh, which means higher number of D2 dopamine receptors and lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism. This is a very typical genotype for like every human. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I've met, um, I've encountered genomes that had A1A1 or A1A2. Um, very interesting stuff. Like for example, Neanderthals or monkeys, they tend to have uh, AA here. They tend to have uh, A1A1, but most of us humans have GG here or A2A2. So CC in this variation of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly higher 
uh, number of D2 dopamine receptor sites and better memory performance. Um, TC here, which is implicated in slightly higher odds of bipolar and schizophrenia. TT here, which is a typical genotype associated with higher odds of autism and tobacco addiction. CC here, which is implicated in higher odds of OCD and intellectual disability, that's DRD3, dopamine receptor D3 gene. G gene in this variation, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to lower odds of autism. CC in this variation of dopamine receptor D2 gene. Uh, dopamine receptor D4, excuse me, uh, which is the typical human genotype and leads to a decreased risk of schizophrenia. Um, what about lactose? Does not have any European lactose persistence mutations. I don't even really need to read this. I, <laughs> I don't need to read this because I know, like, before before even looking at this, I know he's not going to have any European lactose persistence mutations. I uh, see C here, which is associated with an increased OXTR expression in higher levels of empathy. Definitely not a sociopath. And AA here, which means the individual has two variants for higher OXTR expression and increased empathy once again. Uh, another non-sociopath genotype. For diabetes, AG here, which leads to a slightly higher risk of... Well, that doesn't matter. What matters is this one. Sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Because type 1 diabetes is entirely genetic. It's entirely... Uh, it's something you're born with. So having this genotype here, which most humans have CC here, uh, means you probably don't have type 1 diabetes. And that's, that's all that matters, really. Because type 2 diabetes, you can develop it. You can be entirely healthy all your life, but... Uh, you've been eating too much sugar and you can develop type 2 diabetes very easily. Uh, it's it's something that's preventable, and f but type 1 is not. Type 1 is not preventable. Type 2 is preventable, so that doesn't matter all that much. Does not have the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, and I, I can make the assumption that probably doesn't have the other two either, either because they're very rare. Uh, but we don't really know that for sure, once again, because he's not genotyped for these two variations. CC here, which means no APOE alleles. And here, once again, no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation. Probably does not have Alzheimer's. Uh, myopia, AA here, which is the typical genotype and leads to slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness. But it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, most humans have AA here. Most humans have the same genotype as him. And most humans don't have such problem with their eyesight where they can't see uh, like their monitor while sitting in front of it. So it doesn't matter all that much. AA here, which leads to a decrease in the risk of... Well, it doesn't matter, but it's just like most humans have AA here. Uh, pretty much everybody has increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness if you just go off this single variation is what I'm trying to get across here. Uh, AA in this variation, which leads to a decrease in the risk of myopia, and AA here, which means a decreased risk of myopia. So this individual probably did not need glasses, probably did not have problems with eyesight. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can download all three genomes in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And uh, goodbye.